Right, you join us at Historics Car Auctions in Ascot. They've invited us along to film. And what we're gonna do, rather than just look at some cars, we're gonna go in a sort of time sequence. So we're gonna start with the early cars so we can put, rather than just looking at Land Rovers, we can compare them to some other cars. We're gonna look at some Jaguar, Bentley, Mini, and we'll look at the innovation and the sort of timeline and how cars at the same era were competing against each other. And we'll start with this Series 1 Land Rover. So this is a Series 1 in 1951. So this is the start of our time journey. We're starting in 1951. So obviously this is post-war um, and the Land Rover obviously inspired by the Willys Jeep. And it's it's a great, and it's the start of obviously a British icon and the start of the Land Rover brand. So let's take a look at this one. Let's take a look. I think this has probably been over restored, but we'll look. Yeah, so if you take a look at some of the details on this series one, you'll notice that the, the wheel probably was a old English white color and I'd have preferred it was left like that. It looks like it's been painted white. We've got paint runs. We've got hacked off bolts here where he's sawed it off. I'm not sure if it wouldn't have been better to leave it with its patina because I love a Series 1 with its all showing its whole history because these cars were built to be used and often were. So we're not sure, but let's have a look what we've got. So we've got the obviously the inset headlights, the grill that apparently you could use as a barbecue grill. They used to take them off and use as a barbecue, which is a cool feature. Again, the white wheels look too white to me, really. Um, you've got the classic doors with the play and everything in it but this car I think it needs to be used I think it would look better I just want to take it on a trip and get it covered in sand and dust and mud um, the guy seemed to like washers look I know I'm being critical but look he's got washers washers these look way too big on this dashboard you have a look there's a whole look washer 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 there's a whole washer theme going through this car um, let's take a Let's take a look at the back. And you join us at the back, and again, there's like, they just don't look at home here, these sort of shiny washers and that. And you've got a very glossy paintwork in the back. So um, I'm sure it'd be a good daily runabout. There's quite a lot of play in the steering, and I don't know how, how original that is. And I, I think things like these bolts would just wind me up, these, these bolts here where they're cut, sort of, they look too long. They don't look quite right. So. I'm not sure about this one. I do fancy a Series 1, but I'd like a more wrecked one. So, but let's look at the history now. So we're going to go from a Series 1 to a Series 2, and let's see how they got bigger and more practical. So the Series 1 was 1955. I got my dates wrong there. I've just checked. But now we've gone from 55 to 61, so we've advanced six years. So what have Land Rover done in those six years? So they have introduced the Series 2, and now you'll you'll notice that the body has got wider and it's got this sort of curve that runs along the whole side here. You've got this sort of, what do they call it, Ben? Barrel. Barrel, barrel waist. Barrel waist. And that's interesting. I'll put a picture on the screen because that has continued into our new Defender. It's very distinct on our latest new Defender, the barrel waist. And it started with the Series 2. So you've still got very much the sort of Series 1 look. You haven't quite got to, on the Series 3, they moved the headlights to the outside. So again, we've still got the grille, we've got a galvanized front bumper. So this is the 109 inch. So this is the long wheelbase one. And this one is configured with a canvas tilt, um, which I'm trying to decide. I've, I'd quite like one that was a pickup, but this at least gives you some covered space, but I'm not sure how much this will flap about. But notice the color of the wheels. This is a much nicer color, particularly on these old Land Rovers than the white we saw earlier. So this car has had one, it's had several owners, but one of them owned it for a considerably long time and it's sort of much more original. Everything, it looks nicely painted, but more original. And you'll notice that all the bolts haven't been replaced. All the bolts are still rusty. And if you look at the dash, those washers there that on the other one that offended me, everything much more, looks much more period. We notice this one also comes with a knotted bungee cord in, in coordinating green. I don't know, is that for luck? Is that so it doesn't break down? Is it, I don't know. Those of us, you got, obviously, when you look at these Land Rovers, it's great to look at the old heating system. Look, this was the demisting system. Look at that. It comes up here and I think you'd be lucky. And the wipers, they were, they were so rubbish, they even gave you a little manual control so you could wipe it. 
but I bet this makes a hell of a noise when you're driving it along. But everything looks cool in here. We, go, we quite like this one, Ben. This one will be all right. What's the speedo go up to? 70, look, it's got period dust on it. Shh, look at that, cool. Right, we've got a heater, we've got all the switches. We've got the, these, these were very much a thing of the day. These was um, power. This was your cigarette lighter of the day. So this is a plus and minus and you'd get loads of accessories you could plug into there if you wanted, I don't know what, even like a torch or a light or something. You had little leads you plugged into there. Let's take a look, we've got rubber foot mat seats. This one's quite nice, Ben. I don't know if we're putting any bids on anything today. Let's have a look. We've got the canvas tilt at the back. Yeah, and you can see this classic barrel shape here. So there we go, drop down tailgate. We like all that. Private number plate, Land Rover mud flaps, tow bar. Let's have a look underneath, shall we, Ben? What's the chassis looking like? How's it looking? It all looks fairly original under there. We've got a new exhaust on there. I think there might be some evidence of patching on that chassis. Um, I think if I was buying an old Land Rover, and I think the other one we'll go and look at next, has got a galvanized chassis. And I think I'd always, our Defender that we've got in the back cave's got a galvanized chassis because um, you're always fighting the rust. One thing we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna guess the prices. So they say 12 to 16,000. I reckon I'm gonna guess about 15 on this one. It's got practicality value, it's presentable. Right, let's guess the Series 1. What was the guide price on the Series 1? 15 to 18. I'm gonna say, oh, I'm gonna say 13. I'm gonna say you'd be lucky to get that one because it hasn't got the character and it hasn't been restored that well. I'm not such a fan of that Series 1. Right, what are we on to next, Ben? Right, so we're on 1961. We're gonna go forward two years and look at a Mini. Right, 1963, so in 1959, they launched the Mini and it was a revolutionary car. The engine was put in sideways, it was front wheel drive. So if you compare that to the Land Rovers we've just been looking at, this is revolutionary. This is, and it was fueled by the oil, the oil crisis where petrol had got really expensive. And so they needed, and there was a time of bubble cars and small cars for the fuel efficiency. And that's what prompted the Mini. But they took the old Morris Minor engine, put it in sideways, front wheel drive, an absolutely superb piece of design. Now this car is original. So we've looked at the Series 1 and the Series 2, but this car, let's have a look. I think this is like uber original. So it's got everything. We've got the original rusty grill. Oh, it hasn't got the original number plates, but it's got the, right, let's have a look. So look, everything's all seized up. Super original, look at that. Whoa, it's still got the original. What everything looks like that was the clutch. The clutch hasn't been used for a while. The clutch cylinder's loose. We've got no ignition coil. There you go. Okay, that is, but that needs some restoration doing on it, that one. So let's have a look round. Right. I love the little period door. So when you didn't bump into someone's car or your garage, if your garage was tight, look at that. And it's protected the door. Look, it's done its job. Let's take a look in. Look, oh, it look, looks like someone's put the little extended gear knob on it. Cause I think that should be there. But look, it's a super performance modification. And look, straight through to the floor there. The gear chains came straight out. In later years, they put the, the uh, extended remote. So you had a, and look, you got the floor starter switch on the floor, so that's how you start it. Oh, this brings back the smell. And look, the, the interior with this. Oh, this, this one is totes original. It smells original, but it's rusty. You can put your, if you look outside, Ben, you might see my finger coming through the bottom there, look. See, woo! So look, totally original, but yeah, what it, and it's got these, these are before they had the um, plastic ones. It's got the original chrome ones. This is lush. Um, again, it needs a lot of welding. This will need stripping down, but do too many cars get over restored now? How much of the boot is left? It hasn't got its original number plate on the back either, which is a shame. It's still got the original tilt in. Look at that. Oh, look, it's the boot straps have gone. The boot looks like it's been repaired, but it's not too bad, is it? I don't think the boots were ever painted body color. I think that's had a, a looks like it's all been sprayed in the boot at some point, like all the rubber cones and everything have been sprayed over. There we go. Mark one mini, Morris Mini Minor. So 
Right, so where are we going from here? We're gonna go to 1964 now, just a year later than this. And this is gonna be totally the other end of the spectrum. So this is a fuel efficient micro car. Check out this Bentley. So we're now at 1964. So we've had the Mini and now look, look at this beast. 6.2 litre Bentley. Now this thing is mad. It was originally ordered by some Earl of Inkcape and he had it at his castle and then some other guy bought it and he owned it until he died and it's now up for sale. But this thing is just a beast of a thing. I actually really like it. I like the shape. I like the, the my favorite thing on this, come and join me inside in a minute, is the smell. You won't be able to do it, just smell the wood, the leather. I just love it. Some period spotlights, whatever. I mean, it's a crazy old beast. Look at this, we've got some, whoa, it's just madness. I wouldn't even know where to start start on this. So this car has not been started. It's for sale. You have to trailer it away. It's a non-runner. It's a complete restoration project. And we were just talking to Matthew about this car. And I mean, how much is it? It's for sale with no reserve. I, mean, I was thinking it was going to go for 20 or 30,000 pounds, but he reckons it could go for as much as 70,000 pounds. So we will put the results up as we're talking. So I'll put the result and you'll see now have a guess amongst yourselves how much this goes for. We'll have a look round, but we'll see what it goes for. Right, let's have a look around it. Right, Ben, jump in the other side. Oh. The smell is just lush. It's this old Wilton carpets, the leather. Look at these lovely blue leather seats with the big chrome features. There's chrome everywhere, chrome clips, chrome end caps, chrome winders. Um, this is absolutely mad. And the steering, it still feels tight. It feels way better than that Land Rover. Oh look, lockable glove box. And look, let me, give me the camera, Ben. Check out this speedo, it goes backwards. I mean, it's just the RPM gauge. Look at that, it's just totally bonkers. It goes backwards, I don't know if you could see because the sun's reflecting. And look, and the speedo, look. It, what is that? What were they on? The Bentley boys. And I think that's what I like about the Bentleys rather than the Rolls Royces. The Bentleys were always just a bit more bonkers in the community than the Rolls Royce guys. I absolutely, look at the blue, the, the, the cover's still in good condition. Like it's got some tunes playing, look, and a little, oh, look, have we got a little ashtray as well, look. Oh, check out the walnut and chrome ashtray. Looks like we had some dodgy wiring going on. Oh, look, look, an extra, it looks like there was an extra fan. That was probably mounted there um, for some extra cooling. Oh, look, you could, there's the reset for the, you can reset the, uh, the, the trip. I love this car. I love this car so much. Let's have a look at the, oh, look at that. We've got a little armrest in the middle. Right, let's have a look in the boot. Right, we were just having a chat. There's some other guys there. Look at this. But I think the trouble with this car is it's going to get over restored. They're going to put all new carpets in it. They're going to respray it. They're going to just... And it's not gonna, it's gonna lose it. I'd just love to be able to get this going reliably and just run it around like this. I just think it's absolutely class. I love this car. All right, let's have a look under the bonnet. In fact, I'll look underneath because the spark plugs are in some really weird location. Check out that chassis plate. I just love the way it's sort of cast and a conduit street. Bentley Motors, 16 conduit street. Look at that air cleaner. Mind you, it's got 6.2 litres of air going in, in and out of it. Right, let me see if I can just nick the camera and show you where the spark plugs are underneath. So you go under here, hopefully there's enough light, and look up under there. There's some spark plugs up. That is weird. They got some weird way of getting it out, but it all actually looks quite good. There is some rust. It looks like it's had some patching done, and there's, it's generally a little bit rusty under here. But this would be lush. I'd love to be there when this started up. Put a battery on it, put some fuel in it. Lush. Right then, Ben. Let's go. Right, what, what, where are we going next? 1964, where's next on our journey? Right, so we've now traveled just one year, but we're back on the minis again. So we're back on this more new car. But they soon realized that that small mini with the 850cc engine, if you put a bigger engine in it, it would outhandle. It would, if you were driving it, you could beat many a sports car. So Cooper was the people that started tuning them. And this is the Cooper S, this was the top dog. So this would, if you were driving down country lanes in the UK back in 1965, this was the car to be in. 
And let's have a look at this one. So it's old English white, it's got the black roof, you've got the external door hinges, the sliding windows. Let's have a look, you've got twin, twin SU carburetors, and you've got the 1275cc engine, a really compact power plant and you had the handling. Now this car's on the hydroelastic suspension. So there's not many of them that are left on the hydroelastic suspension. Um, it was an interesting, there's good and bad things. You had the pipes that go from front to back that used to rust, rust out and the displacer units are hard to get now. But there we go, let's have a look around. Ooh. This car is absolutely immaculate and absolutely original. It's unbelievable. You've got the original steering wheel, carpets, the brocade interior. You've got the speedo with the gear change positions. You've got the chrome flush top ashtray. This is absolutely immaculate. So this in 1965 would have been absolute rocket shooting along. Right, where are we gonna go next? We're gonna go on and find the Range Rover Classic next. We haven't seen it, but let's just have a little look in the back. This car is an absolute delight. It's so mint. Everything is absolutely pristine on it. This is a real example of a, I mean, it is very well restored. It's probably nicer paintwork than when the car was new, but that is an immaculate car. That is lush. Right, so we're now in 1971 and Range Rover have just, or Land Rover have just launched the Range Rover. So this is their way to get into the more luxury car market. So they started with the Land Rovers and we've seen a couple of Series 1s and Series 2s. And people were modifying the Series 1s and Series 2 and fitting leather seats and companies were putting more deluxe features in them. So Land Rover noticed this and so they decided to enter the luxury car market, but it's still not as luxury as we know Range Rover today. But when you compare it to a Land Rover, this is now more luxurious. And it had the V8 engine. So inspired by the Americans, they acquired some rights to a V8 engine. Right, so there you've got a V8 petrol engine, 3.5 litres. So this is the start of the legendary V8 Rover engine, started in the Range Rover. So they had a lot of power and it was launched as the car for all reasons, not all seasons, all reasons. So you could drive this car 100 miles an hour down the motorways that were just taken over in the UK. And also you could drive it cross country. It was just all round awesome car. And let's have a look round. So originally only available in a two-door format. So there we go. So this is it. This is this is the first Range Rover. So you've got the very much. Remember, this is in the 1970s, the start of the 70s. So the colour scheme, the blue. I think it's teal blue on this sort of yellow interior. But lots of plastic and vinyls, and we've got stereos and. But actually, it's a really spacious place to be. This two-door cabin. You've got very thin pillars and it's a really light and spacious way and this I mean we've got our one is a 1980s one and this model this three-door model continued on for years I think ours is 1989 so this continued on for 19 years in very much the same format some minor changes were made the lights were updated this has got a sort of galvanized rear bumper but also you see, this is where you see the first time in a Land Rover range, you've got this sort of classic up and down tailgate that continued into the Disco 3 and Disco 4. Although the new Range Rovers now um, don't have it. They dropped this, the Range Rover P38 had it, and we'll look at that. But then it soon got dropped with, well, the Range Rover L322 had it. Um, so, but this is a really practical tailgate arrangement, very popular. You notice you've got the bench front seat, so still away from luxury, but sort of vinyl, some carpentry, but a great car and really launched the Range Rover brand. So let's have a look on our time journey. Where are we off to next? Right, we haven't played the price game. We must keep playing the price game. So what is the Mini Cooper S gonna go for? Let's have a look on my sheet. What was the guide price for the Mini Cooper S? The Mini Cooper S, how much is that going to go for? I reckon, based on what they were selling for at the show last week, I think that's got to be around £40,000 for that one. But what's this going to go for? The guide price for this classic is 28 to 35 Now, it's pretty good, but it's not mint. You can see some areas here 
where it's sort of showing its age. And I think, I don't think this one's going to go for, I mean, some of these are going for crazy money. Some of these um, early three door, two door Range Rovers, classics. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 32,000 on this one. I'll put on the price, I'll put on the screen the price it goes for. Right, let's continue looking around. What are we going to go? We're going to go and look at a, another British Leyland car that's using the same V8 engine, an MGB GT V8. Let's go and take a look. Right, we're right under the speaker with this one. So this, we're up to 1973. This is an MGB GT, um, and it's got the V8 engine. So they didn't make so many. Most of them had the 1800 B series engine in it, but this has got the 3.5 litre. Now, powering that big Range Rover was a good job, but it must be lethal in something this size. And this is before the days of ABS or traction control. This must just be wild to drive. Now, apparently they gave us some or sold a few to the police. So this is actually a genuine ex-police car. And that must have been quite interesting, chasing people in an MGB GT V8. They must have been good drivers. I guess this was like the sort of police interceptors car of the day. Those of you that have watched those Subarus and um, Mitsubishi Evos. So this car has been extensively restored. Now, here's an interesting topic. Apparently they spent £23,000 on the restoration of this vehicle and the guide price is only 23 to 28. So are classic cars a good investment or is it a hobby? And when I get somewhere quieter, we'll talk more about that. But let's just have a look around this car. So it's got the chrome bumpers. The later ones had the rubber bumpers. It's got some period wheels on it. It's got a, oh, look, it's got a lush velour interior. Check that out. Oh, look. oh, it's got oh, it's got all the switches. It's just, it's like our fire engine. Look, it's got them printed on those same little things. So there's the auxiliary lights. It's got the police radio. I've got the radio in our um, Range Rover Classic fire truck. So look at that. So yeah, whoa. So this is cool. I've had a couple of MGBs. They're okay. We call them Marina Coupes. There you go. Um, excellent. So what is this one going to go for? I think it would be a good enough buy. I'm going to, I'm going to go safe. I'm going to go 25, middle of the road, but let's just have a look. I mean, they are a practical, usable, everyday car. I'm not so sure about the V8, but certainly the 1800 was. Right, we are going to jump eight years forward and we're going to go and look where Land Rover are back. We'll catch up with back in Land Rover with a Series 3. Right, so we're now in, 90, we're in the 80s. Look at that. My favourite radio station, absolute 80s. So we're in the 80s now. They, they've obviously, this is now the Series 3 and it's modernised, but it's still, let's be honest, quite an old format. We've got a chassis, we've got car springs, leaf springs at the back. This is still an old car, but these were selling well. They sold 440,000 Series 3, so it's the most common Land Rover. This is the long wheelbase, the 109 inch, and it's been done in this colour. I'm not sure if it's original, but it, it's a nice colour. It's a sort of low key colour. It looks really nice. It's got, had some upgrades. It's got the upgraded LED lights. Um, notice now we've gone to the plastic grille. We've got the headlights have moved from the centre more outwards. So there we go. So we've still got the, um, so this is still four wheel drive, low ratio, high ratio. I think this one's a petrol. Now this is interesting. So this has had, £30,000 spent on it. So this has got a new galvanised chassis and they've actually painted it black so it doesn't look like replaced, it looks original. And we'll have a look underneath it in a minute. And it's absolutely mint. So, but look, so it's £30,000 has been spent on it and the guide price is 23 to 28. So as an investment, this really hasn't made much sense. Oh, he's a bit loose. It doesn't go that fast though, so the wind drag's not going to take it, right? Um, but let's have a look around this one. So it's got the canvas tilt again. So that's a bit weird. We've got two of them with the canvas tilt this time. I mean, if I bought this, and I don't think I'm going to bid on this one, I would make it into a pickup. I'd put a cab top. And that was one of the cool things about the Defender. You could bolt the different bits on. You could make it from a, you could put a car, cab on or a different body and reconfigure them, which was really cool. We still got what appeared to be the removable door top. So this isn't, it's only when the Defender came that the door became one piece. We got some sliding windows. We got some upgraded seats in this one. This is really nice. Sort of just updated. 
from it is just painted and restored and we'll go and look underneath. So this is quite a usable car, but Ben and I were saying, I don't know about this configuration. You've got this six seat, but I think this has been done primarily for hunting. So when you go out and, um, and you want to go on a shoot, sorry, shooting, when you go out for a shoot, and it's quite a big thing in certain circles to take cool cars to a shoot, but you could take six people out on a shoot in this. And yeah, those people that do the shooting have got a lot of money and like to show off. So I think this is really going to sell. So my call on the value of this one, it's going to sell. And we've just talked to Matthew, who's invited us here today. And he said the prices pretty much go on the website live on Saturday. So I'll be able to put the prices on for you. So I think this one is going to sell for 28. I think you spent the 30K, you want it, you're not going to lose money on it. Right, let's have a look around it as well. It's, it's got some weird sort of paint defect at the back it looks like someone it looks like it's been somewhere and it's been all chipped up and something um let me grab the camera off you ben don't want you lying down but look how mint this is underneath this is absolutely immaculate i mean this is restored to the highest standard look everything is as it should be i mean absolutely mint that is that is a new car um so there we go. Right, where are we off to next, Ben? Right, it's back outside. We are going to 1988. We're zooming ahead five years and we're going to look at an MG Metro. So we're 1988. So this is the decade of the hot hatch. We've got the Golf GTIs coming on board. We've got Peugeot 205s. And what are Austin Rover going to do to... Well, what they've got is they've got a Morris Minor engine mounted in sideways. They've developed the Metro from the Mini. Um, so they are going to make this their hot hatch. So, right, here's a crazy fact. So what would you think would be more common, a 1988 MG Metro or an original Mini Cooper S like the one we've seen? Well, I've just looked on the website. I'll put the figures on the screen now. There's only 13 of these known to the DVLA at the moment, 13. Whereas there's over 500 Austin Cooper S's and over 500 Morris Cooper S's. So there's a thousand original OG Mini Cooper S's known to the DVLA, but, but only 13 of these. And there's a reason for that. One is they're not so collectible. And the second is they rusted out. I mean, the Mini's rusted out, but, um, this one is mint. This has got 20,000 miles. I used to have an MG Metro. I bought it off my mate's sister. It was white and it was rusty. Um, but let's take a look. They were, look. Look at this. They got, you got all the red piping on the interior. You got the matching. You got the MG logo. Look, you've got this dash with this super 80s sort of grid effect. We haven't got any digital dash stuff going on. I think the only digital thing in here is the, is the clock. We've got a non-leaking sunroof. This car is absolutely mint. What is the guide price? What is it going to go for? Let's take a look in the booth. This car is absolutely lush. I love this one. It's got the original wheel trims. Interestingly, it hasn't got alloy wheels. They were a bit cheap there, weren't they? Well, maybe it was only the Metro Turbo. So they did the MG Metro Turbo, which was better. Let's, oh, mind that, there we go. Oh, that was close. All right, look at that. Look at that, that is absolutely pristine. This is mint. This is ridiculous. Look at that. That is great. So, right, let's have a look at the paperwork. So what is an MG Metro? What is it worth? So we have got no reserve on this. Oh, absolutely mint, this car. This is insane. I'm gonna look under the bonnet. Right, value. I'm going to call £12,000 on this. And at 12000 I think it'll be a bargain. I think it's absolute steal. It, the car's immaculate. Just check that out. That is mad. I'm going to do a TikTok on this, Ben. This is absolutely insane. This is just time warp. That is crazy. So there you go. So that is the 1275 MG engine, which is actually the same as the Cooper S, which is the same as the Morris Minor before it. The A-Series engine, single carburetor, no fuel injection, none of that crazy ECUs or any of that crazy stuff. This is proper distributor, coil, carburetor. This is a proper car. Right, we have traveled just a year after the MG Metro. This is 1989. So the MG Metro is sort of 
a hot hatch, but it's not really a St. Morris Boiner engine, where other companies like Maserati were making this car, and it's a bi-turbo, and I believe it's one of the first cars with a bi-turbo. So we'll take a look at this. I just love the classic 80s styling. It screams DeLorean to me, but at a much cheaper price, and much more, much quicker, and more reliable. So let's have a look at some of the cool features of this car. Check out, check out this sort of Lamborghini style bonnet scoops. Um, and just look, everything is square. I just love the sort of, the fineness, the finesse of the door handle. I just like it, it's all solid metal. And let's look inside, check out this blue interior. This is off the scale. This is, everything is sort of quilted and check out this armrest with all this quilt in and um, they're quite short little seats, but I absolutely love this car. I love the wood, I love the blue. It's just a time warp. Again, you compare this to the MG Metro. The MG Metro, in some way, was more hot hatchy. This is like classy. I like this. This is, and check this out. If I press this button on the dash here, and look at all these buttons, it's just press this, bam, your full fat opens. So it looks like it's a Maserati logo, but it's actually the filler. And they've mirrored it on the other side, although the other side isn't a filler cap. So they've but look at the classic 80s styling, even the lines in the lights. It's just absolutely lush. The twin carbs, I'm not sure the GB badge is great, but absolutely good. We've got the speakers, we've got the Hella Matrix LED stop lamp. It's got, I just love it, the proper chrome trims. I absolutely, look, they've got the smooth wheels before EVs came along. It's absolutely great. I love this car. This car's been in storage for years. It was restored years ago, kept in dry storage, and it is absolutely mint. I really, really like this car. Oh, this car is great. Let's see if we can pop the bonnet and have a look underneath. I'm no Maserati expert at all. I've got no idea what this is, but I've worked out it's a six cylinder engine. We've got distributor ignition, but we've got fuel injection. Compare this to the MG Metro, which was still running on the carburetor. This is an absolute beast. Check out the, Oh, this is, and check out the foam on the, I don't know if this is original, but it's got like some anechoic foam on the inside. Look, barely room for the, barely room to let the air out of the air ducts. This is absolutely lush. Look at all the aluminium. Oh, I bet this is an absolute beast. And it's all really low, so this has got to handle well, you would hope. All the way is down low. I absolutely love this car. And check this out, look, to release the bonnet, it took us ages, because look, when you lift it up, You've got this little mechanism here that presses. It's so cool. Oh, this car is really lush. Right, where are we off to next? Now this, so we are gonna go to the, go and look at another Land Rover. So, so what are Land Rover doing around this time? Let's go and look at our next car. Right, we love the Maserati. It's one of my favorites, but what's the guide price? The guide price is between 15 and 20,000 pounds, which I think is an absolute bargain. I'm gonna call this one going for 25. I'm tempted to bid 15 myself. Should I? I don't know. Right, we have now transported through time to 1994. We're mid-90s. And the Land Rover Defender, this is our first Defender we've seen in this video, has been for sale for 10 years. And they decided to make it a bit more lifestyle-y. So they've come up with this limited edition 90 SV. Now, I think this has been this must be one of the first SV special vehicles. Now we know SV because now they do the SVR and the SVO, and this is the Land Rover Defender 90 SV. So this was supposed to make it more lifestyle. It was a limited edition run. They only made 90 of these, and it was in this Caprice green. And these are really quite collectible. There's quite a cult following. There's a Facebook group and everything, and it came with the full roll bar. And I, I guess it was trying to give you that sort of Jeep look, that Jeep. Um, but look, you've got the full roll cage. I'm not sure that these side bars were standard, and I don't think the chrome front bumper was standard, but I think they actually fit really well. So Ben and I were just talking and saying, this is a bit more 90s, a bit more in your face. And you look at the old Series 3, this is looking much more modern. But compared to the fuel-injected Maserati, I'm not sure, but it, Land Rover were making an attempt. But one thing I think is they should have done this with a V8. Imagine this, if they made them all with V8s, it would have been absolutely awesome, fun, lifestyle vehicle. This would have been cool cruising down the beach with this but let's take a look. So you've got the half tailgate at the back, you've got the spare wheel, 
You've got seats at the back for four. So this is a six seat and you've got this padded roll cage. It seems like that's some safety requirement for the US. They did sell some of these to the US, I think. So there we go. Right, this has done 123,000 miles, which is good because it's been used. People have enjoyed it. It looks pretty clean underneath. It looks pretty original, unrestored. Let me check what the guide price is on this. Right, the guide price on this is 20 to 25,000. Now, I think this should be worth every penny of 25,000. So I'm gonna predict this is gonna get the 25K. This is a totally usable, very clean. This is a 200 TDI diesel. This isn't gonna go down in value. I think this is a collectible Land Rover. Right, launched in 1994, so just a year after that Defender we've just been looking at, was the Range Rover P38. This is a 1999 version. This has only done 8,000 miles. In Rioja Red, it's the V8 4.6. Now, I don't think this badge was original. I think whoever owned this car liked badging. We'll have a look. But this car is absolutely mint. So this is apparently the autobiography version. It's got the wooden steering wheel. And this is, you look inside the seats, you, when you restore a car, you can't get it. You can't get the seats so crisp. There's just absolutely nothing wrong with this car. It's, oh, we did find one thing, didn't we, Ben? Um, but look, absolutely mint. The steering wheel's not worn. Everything is absolutely, oh, someone's got the horn going. Right, look at the back seats. I don't think the back seats have ever been sat in. Look at that, the carpets absolutely mint although one thing that it's a little disappointing and it is a is the headlining so look even regardless of that the headlining is sagging um which is a real shame but i'm sure is a relatively straightforward fix so this car is right so what is the guide price on this car we'll have to look guy salmon it looks like it's got the original sticker there look this car is look normally they get all grubby fingerprints on here you've got the and this is so, now it's interesting, the Range Rover Classic, they sold it for 24 years. They managed to get 24 years out of the tooling. But look at this, everything is as original. You've got the new tire, everything in there is as it should be. So that is an absolute gem, that one. And I think this is, it's certainly highly usable. Let's have a look what the figures are. Well, this is a tricky one to value. There's no guide price that I can see. I'll double check. I've got nothing written down on my piece of paper. I mean, George bought his 30th anniversary one with the picnic tables and everything in it. He only paid over three and a half thousand for that. So, but that has got some mileage on it. It had a new engine. We've got some stuff we've got to sort on this one. This one is the genuine low mileage. You can't restore it or create it. It's not the most collectible, but it is desirable. It is the autobiography. I reckon, I did say 12, I'm gonna go 12. I reckon you've got a virtually new car for 12,000 pounds. You could use it for 10 years without a problem. Right, last car, let's go and look at 2010. So let's leap forward another decade, Bentley Continental GT. Right, we have jumped forward a whole decade. We are up to 2010 and this is our last and final car. So this is the Bentley Continental GT Supersport. Wow, this is really cool. Ever since the Bentley Continental GT was launched, I've always had a soft spot just for the really soft lines. It's almost got an old school look to it. Right, so this is the Super Sport model. So this has got carbon fiber back seats. I love this sort of tan and black quilted interior. Oh, it actually smells lush as well. So this has got a 5,000 pound navigation system upgrade. It's got like a 7,000 pound exhaust upgrade. It's absolutely, that's 13,000 pound of upgrades already. This is, and this has got no reserve, this car. It's only done 22,000 miles. It's got carbon fiber everywhere. Now, the rear seat was taken out and replaced at factory with this carbon fibre brace across the back to give more rigidity. But apparently, not many of the Bentley customers like this two-door. They wanted this two-seater configuration. They liked the two plus two. So they ended up taking a lot of these cross braces out. And now they're really rare, these ones, the original ones with the cross brace in. Now, I really like this car. This is lush. I've just spotted something. Have you seen the bonnet, Ben? Have you seen the bonnet badge? So, so it looks like when you release the bonnet, does that how you 
released the bonnet there. Whoa, look at that. There we go. So this is the W12 engine. And this is mad. 600 brake horsepower, 590 brake horsepower. I don't know if the Super Sport was tuned. It's got massive wheels and I think it's got ceramic discs. Check out these massive disc brakes and these massive wheels. Right, we better have a look at that exhaust. If someone spent £7,000 on it, it deserves a look. Right, we can't see a lot for £7,000. Let's hope it does a lot, but look, that is seven, that's everybody what a £7,000 exhaust system looks like. I'm not sure, but it all looks good. So yeah, this is another one I'd be tempted on bidding, but what is this one gonna go for? I found one on eBay a similar year for £29,000 which is ridiculously cheap, but this one's done low mileage. It's the two-seater. I'm gonna say this one is gonna be 35 to 35,000 I'm going, but we'll have the sold prices and we'll see what it goes for. So we've talked to Matthew and he said that the, um, he sold a third of these cars already. And I thought, well, how can that work? The auction hasn't happened yet, but they've got bids in on them that will meet the reserve already for a third of the cars. And he says that, even if they don't sell at auction, they normally sell pretty quickly in a day or two afterwards. So Matthew said he might come and join us or we can come and join him again. So that's really cool. So just a final thank you to the guys here at Historic Car Auctions. Um, it's been a great day out. We've seen some cars that are quite interesting. I hope you've enjoyed our selection. There were loads more there. There's another auction in May. Check out the Historic website. I'll put the link below. And yeah, so the funny story is Matthew, he's actually got a new Defender. So that's how he knew us because he's watched our YouTube series on the Defender. So that's really cool.